Okay, today I want to talk about basic 12 volt automotive relays, how they work, how to test them, how to wire them up, and why they're really not that complicated. Alright, so what I have here is two relays. One is a four pin. This one's from a Nissan, this one's from a Ford. The make and model of the vehicle doesn't really matter. Um, you can get these as universal uh, Bosch type relays. The main major difference is, is the pin count. So this is a four pin, this is a five pin. So the big difference here is the five pin has a, a normally closed and a normally open circuit where this one only has a normally open circuit. So depending on your situation you may not actually need that center 87 8 terminal. So you'd be good to put a, a four pin in a five pin slot because you're not using that center terminal anyways. So the purpose of these relays is to activate high current circuits using a low current trigger. So an example would be your headlights. You wouldn't want all the current from your headlights going through your switch for your headlights. So you're going to use the the switch from your headlights to activate this circuit and allow your power from the battery to flow to your headlights. So first let's talk about this side. So your 85 terminal and your 86 terminal are essentially one circuit in the relay. Your 85 terminal will be hooked up to ground and then your 86 will be from any 12 volt trigger or switch source or power source. So I can label this as trigger. Uh, this is what's going to be activating the circuit. Example being, like I said, your, your headlight switch, um, your key on for your ignition, anything like that. So inside this circuit you have a resistor and the terminals are connected up to this copper coil winding. So when you apply power to the circuit, it creates a magnetic field in here. And this is what opens and closes these circuits. And for some of you car stereo guys that are running big stereos that have, you know, three, four, five, six, eight amplifiers, this might be a good idea for your remote wire. I would hope if you're running eight amplifiers, you would know this already, but some of your protection circuits on your amps are run off of the remote signal. So if you have a low... Uh, voltage coming from your head unit and you're trying to run all of those amplifiers off of it you may have some issues with protection early so you can take your signal from your remote on your head unit to switch the circuit on and then just run the 12 volt constant through the relay to all of your amps so you have strong battery voltage going to each amp for your remote now that we understand the 85 and 86 terminal circuit we can talk about this side over here. So you have a 30 terminal, an 87, and an 87A. On the 5 pin, this 87A terminal is going to be your normally closed circuit, which means that there's continuity between this all of the time when the relay is not active. When the relay is active, this 8586 circuit is active, the contactor switches over to the 87 terminal and now you can pass your current through here. Not active. Active. Not active. Active. All right, now let's take what we learned from our drawing and look at the actual relay on the inside. So you can see down here we have the resistor it's going in between your 85 and 86 terminals. You can see it connects over here on the other side. Here you have your coil, which connects between your 87 and your 30. And when those are activated, the magnetic field pulls this in. And you can see this little contactor here touches and that's what passes your high current load through the relay.
So now I'll apply power. You can see the activation, and that's where you hear your click. So this is when I activate the 85 and the 86 terminals. Now that we understand the circuitry on the inside of the relay, let's go through hooking this thing up. So you can see we have the 86 terminal here, the 85 terminal here. So I'll take my ground wire, hook it up to my 85. Now I'll go through and hook up the trigger wire. And this is actually just hooked to a battery right now. So it's going to click when it turns on. But this is how you would hook up your ground and your trigger, whatever this would be coming from your switch. This is going to be to hook up your 12 volt positive from your battery and then your wire going to the load. So here I will hook up the 87 terminal. This is coming from the battery. And then down here, I'll hook up the 30. And this is going to be going to my load, whatever the load is. Lights, amps, fog lights, door switch, trunk latch, whatever you had. I want to explain why this doesn't have to be that complicated as long as you understand that there's one circuit here and one circuit here. This is one element, this is another element, but they work together. So this is going to be your trigger circuit. You have a ground to the relay and then your switch, wherever that's coming from. And then this is just a pass through. This is going to be passing voltage and current through the relay to your load. So these terminals here on the outside are one element. This is going to activate the coil and this is just going to pass through. So I'll show you this by hooking this up I'm activating the relay so the polarity doesn't really matter as long as that circuit is being activated it's still gonna pass whatever you need it's still gonna pass it through now to show you this I have battery power hooked up to the 30 terminal down here and then I'll apply power and ground to these terminals. You hear the click and you see 12 volts come on the multimeter. So now if I take this, switch it around, see the same thing. So it doesn't matter how these are hooked up it's still going to do the same thing and pass through. So now let's talk about uh, troubleshooting and testing. One method to verify if this is working or not is to listen for that click. You've heard it a couple times already, but we'll do it again. Hear that click. So that's a positive sign. It means that that coil and contactor is working. But you could also have an issue with the, the pass-through here, even if you have a click. You can use a multimeter. And make sure that you have continuity between the 30 and the 87 when this is active. So we have continuity, so this relay is working. Now you see when we don't have, it act, don't have this hooked up and activated, we don't have continuity between those terminals. Now when we hook it up, contactor moved, now we have continuity. Another thing these relays can actually be used for is changing the polarity of the circuit. So if you for some reason had a positive signal, but you needed a negative trigger, um, in some cases uh, like a trunk latch, a trunk release button would be a negative trigger. There's a positive hooked up and when you push your trunk button it sends a negative trigger to the trunk. Um, so if you were hooking up a uh, different type of like a remote start or some kind of uh, a different box that would send a, it had a positive output and you needed a negative trigger, this is how you would change the polarity. You have your two negatives hooked up here 
these two terminals are going to be your coil to activate. So you have your one side of the coil grounded, you're sending your positive trigger. That's going to activate your coil and then it's going to pass a negative signal through to the trunk latch or whatever signal you needed to do. So I wanted to show this changing a positive trigger to a negative output. So you're basically changing the polarity. Um, so I have this positive hooked up to the positive on the battery and for this head unit here I have the positive wire hooked up but the negative is not so I'm going to be hooking this to the relay using a positive trigger so what's going to happen here when I hook the positive up it's going to activate the coil inside the relay and pass this negative signal through to the negative which will run the head unit show I don't have the negative at all hooked up to the battery negatives right here the only thing that I have hooked up to the battery is going to the relay so I'm just gonna hold this on here I'll hook up the positive trigger you heard the relay activate Now the head unit turns on. So that was using a positive signal. So changing a positive trigger to a negative output. That was four pin and five pin relays. Hopefully this video helped answer some questions you have about how relays work and how to troubleshoot. For me, Understanding these relays really came when I understood the two separate portions of one side is just a coil that's activated by a trigger source that allows current to be passed through the other terminals to your load. Once I was able to break that down in my head that it really helped me understand that these things really aren't that complicated and there's actually a lot of cool stuff that you can do with them. So hopefully this helped. Be sure to leave a comment, let me know what you think. Like, subscribe, and check out some of the other videos.